Hi, I'm Kent at Sweetwater, and today we're going to be looking at in ceiling speaker installation. We're also to discuss 70 volt or constant voltage sound systems in general. So before we begin, on the install side of things, let's look at why we even do 70 volt. When we ter use the term 70 volt, what we're referring to is a high voltage or constant voltage sound system. Now this is different than a regular sound system you'd use with a band, and the reason we use it is because we're looking at situations where a standard sound system will not work. For instance, we might have a lobby in a hotel and we need to put background music in there. That's a large space. We can't simply put 40 speakers around the room and do a complicated system naturally or traditionally. Instead, we want to look at using this voltage idea on a high level. Now your local power company, when they generate electricity and they send it to your house, they raise the voltage and put it down a high voltage power line, bring it to your house and use a transformer to bring it back down to power you can use on a daily basis. You don't think about the fact when you plug in a lamp or turn on a microwave that that alters the power landscape because that voltage is set to do that. The same thing applies here. We're going to take numbers of speakers and put them on one system typically in mono, and be able to utilize all of these speakers in a large space without having to worry about ohmage and impedance and how many watts we have. It's a very simple process. Now the gear before you may look complicated, but it's not. So let's look at a few options. The first would be, we have a restaurant, and that restaurant needs to put sound in this space. Over in this space, there's a balcony area, there's a small patio area outside. Each of those may need different requirements as far as sound and volume. If I take a 70 volt system, I'm able to apply large amounts of power and sound out on the patio where they may want it a little louder, but softer and quieter back in the recessed corners of this space. I may also need to have the host be able to call out a name for someone whose table is now ready. And that needs to be able to turn down the music, we call it ducking, and be able to say that name and then the music gently comes back up. All of that is in constant voltage. Now a constant voltage sound system utilizes the same components, generally speaking, as a standard PA with a few tweaks. The first thing is that transformer. We mentioned that earlier talking about power. And all a transformer does is it takes energy at high voltage and turns it down to low voltage or does the opposite or inverse. And this high voltage, low current situation is very much like if we use a standard garden hose. So you're out in your yard, you're watering your flowers, and you get to the end of the hose and the water doesn't quite reach those flowers. We all do the same thing. We take our thumb, we put it over into the hose, and now that stream goes further out. All we've done is increase the pressure and we've reduced the volume, and now that water, the same amount, goes further out. That's exactly what we do, is that pressure is voltage and current is flow in electricity. And when I increase the pressure, I'm able to reduce the current and I have less loss. Now you've probably hooked up a 100 foot speaker cable at some point and thought, you know, that's not as loud as the one that's on the 10 foot speaker cable. That's because you have the loss in this high current low voltage situation. So we just take and turn that around. Now we'll have the same components. We'll have a mixer, an amplifier, and loudspeakers. But how we use them is a little bit different. So let's look at that. When we start with a standard sound system, we're dealing with a number of inputs. And those inputs come in, say the band, all the drums, the keys, guitars, vocals, all of that, and then we send that out generally to just one area. A constant voltage system is a little bit different. We're not dealing with a number of inputs. We might have, say, a Bluetooth input, another media input, maybe one or two mics. But what we're dealing with more is what we call zones. And all zones are, are just outputs that go to different areas. Again, back to our restaurant, they may be going to the front area, to the bar, out to the patio. And so these different zones need different levels or different EQ, and we deal with this on sort of a distributed basis. And sometimes you'll hear this termed a distributed sound system. Now you'll see funny terms like 70.7V. All that means is that we're using roughly 70 volts, and we all call it 70, even though it's 70.7, in the US. Now in Europe, it's generally thought of as a 100 volt system. In some areas, it's a 25 volt system. 
But again, all we're doing is taking that sound and raising the voltage that's carrying it and reducing the current so we don't have signal loss. And here's the kicker, is now we can hook up a number of speakers, not worry about how we wire them or where they go or the impedance of this one versus that one. So in a 70 volt system, the mixer amp, which is before us here, this small product here, does like a powered mixer does in a standard PA. It combines the mixer section and the amplifier section. Now we can separate out the mixer section if we needed that, that would be exampled here, and any standard power amp will work if we put a transformer on the output. Now there are a number of amplifiers that already have that built in. In fact, a standard power amplifier that's putting out 625 watts into 8 ohm is 70 volt. So we can get that or put a transformer in or simply utilize something like this that has already had the 70 volt transformer installed. So again, we're raising that up to 70, sending it down the line and bringing it back down. And there's a transformer, like you see on this small speaker here, that then reconverts that back. Because this is simply a standard speaker that happens to have a transformer on the front end of it. So let's pr start putting this together. If we look at the back of our standard mixer amplifier, on here we're going to see that, oh, there aren't a bunch of XLR inputs. No, there are these funny little green things. Now, these are Phoenix or Euro connectors and they sound complicated and they look really funny like this, but they're actually pretty straightforward. The new ones have little tabs which make this easy and we simply plug them in like this and now we're able to connect our wire. When we connect the wire, the reason we're doing this in this manner is, first, we don't have to solder XLRs. Secondly, we don't have to pay for XLRs because this is far cheaper than an XLR. And there are three poles typically on this. There would be a hot, a cold, and a common. There may be coming in three, four, five poles. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's talk about the three because this will allow us to take a standard XLR type cable that have, has a hot, has a cold, has a common, and put those in here, and now we can plug that in. That would be, say, our microphone that we're going to use to page or, or duck in our application. The other part of it is we're also going to utilize that on the output. Now, here's where it gets fun, because if I have a loudspeaker 100 feet away, it always makes sense in a standard PA to use as big a cable as I can get. Well, that's expensive, and it's hard to carry around. In this constant voltage world, we can use 16 gauge cable that's like this, very inexpensive, and we want to make sure obviously that it meets the safety criteria of the application we're using, and your Sweetwater sales engineer can help you ascertain that. But it's simply going to be just this red and black, just a hot and a cold. And we're going to tie that into the terminal point here. And the way we do that is we simply insert it into the two points here. We roll this in, and then we use what we call a tweaker or a small standard uh, flathead screwdriver and we will simply turn that down and secure this into this port. Once it's in there, we can then insert it into our amplifier. So that takes care of that end. Now we get to the speaker end. The speaker end can be a little intimidating. If we look at this, this particular atlas, this is an end ceiling. You've seen this a thousand times in the airports and hotels and restaurants. But what we're doing again, standard speaker here, that's an open back loudspeaker and we have our standard hot and cold at this point with terminal point here but this little transformer on the front end which is core windings around a steel center point allows us to be able to tap this is the keyword to tap into that loudspeaker now this looks intimidating this looks like your car stereo that your buddy did in high school right that's not as intimidating as it first appears because there's a little code down here at the bottom and it says hey if you're running 70 volt, we're always going to use the black wire as the common. Okay, that's half the problem. The second one is how loud we want it to be. And we tap this. Now, a tap would simply be how much wattage are we going to pull from our amplifier and send to this loudspeaker. And there's a little code right here that says what the color code is. Say gray is 2 watts and orange is 5 watts. We're going to typically look at the tap appropriate to the space and that depends on several factors. The first is, well how high is this speaker in the ceiling? If we're talking about a nine foot ceiling, then we only have about a three or four foot drop to the person who's standing. But if it's a 15 foot ceiling, that changes things. We're going to need more power to get it down here. And we term this uh, ability to tap. This is one of the most vital aspects of constant voltage. 
the only real rule in all of this is we want to not tap collectively among all the speakers more than the output of the amplifier. So it's for a simple math. Let's say we have a 100 watt amplifier and we have 20 loudspeakers. That means we can tap each of them up to five watts each, right? Five times 20 is 100. But we do want to give a little headroom. That is, we want to not go to that max, typically 10 to 20 percent headroom. So we would tap around 80 watts total. So that would give us about four watts to each speaker. But again, because we're in constant voltage, we're allowed to tap this one at four watts, this one at eight watts, as long as we tap this one at two watts and this one at two watts. Does that make sense? So we're simply adding up the total tap that we pull, and it needs to be about 80 percent of the output of the amplifier. That's really the only rule. Other than that, we just go at it. The other part about this that's so fun, in the sense that installing loudspeakers can be fun, is that the inputs on the back are just the hot and the cold, and then we simply tap over to another one. We just daisy chain this. If you're old enough to remember how we used quarter inch cables of speaker cables to tie one to another and we had four monitors across the front, we went into one and out of that to the other one, same thing here. We go in, we go out. Now, in a loudspeaker in a constant voltage environment, there are going to be three types of loudspeakers. That is, the recessed in ceiling, like we have here. This particular variant, as we mentioned earlier, has an open back. What that does is it makes it cheap. It sounds decent, but it doesn't have any real low end. But if we want more bass and we want a better sound, a number of manufacturers, we have JBL and Electro Voice represented in this category, these have a back can on them or a top hat. And just like Abraham Lincoln wore, you can get the idea of the top hat. It's a sealed back, a steel, steel, sealed back, increases the low frequency response, generally gives us a better product. And the access is simply through here. We now come into this exact same Phoenix type connector and we're able to uh, tie into this, tie it off. This often is very good for meeting any space that might have a stringent electrical requirement. Even though we're still relatively low voltage, not true AC, uh, it's nice to always meet criteria. This has a hang point here for a safety. And then mounting this into position on the ceiling depends on a number of factors. If we have an open face ceiling, then we're going to mount this through a crossbar. And so this piece here goes on the back of the loudspeaker. And then this part simply slides in here and holds that up across the bridged area. If we have a drop ceiling, and a drop ceiling is often, unfortunately, utilizing these types of speakers with no tile bridge. And over the years, you'll see it sag. So a tile bridge is simply this box here and allows us then to put the speaker into this point and it bridges across that ceiling grid tiles. Does that make sense? Drops in here, speaker goes in here, and this provides the rigidity that we're going to need over time to have that speaker not sag that particular area. There are a number of really well thought out installation aspects as well, including some cap points here and some uh, templates that always come in the box, which allow you then to use cardboard to use your cutout so that you're not having to use the actual speaker during that installation process because that's when all the dust is flying, as pain is getting done, so it saves the loudspeaker until you actually need to come back in on the backside and be able to do it. Now having discussed that part of it, if we start putting this together and we look at our amplifier and our loudspeakers together, then again we're going to consider how many zones we need. And this is where we have to think just a little bit. How much do I want to invest in what my customer or my client or my congregation in the case of a church are going to need in these different areas? So for instance in the case of a restaurant, it may be a themed restaurant, and if music is an important part of that theme, then while this may work, this is going to work better, and this may work best, because it goes back to the fact of quality products. So we're going to spread 15 or 20 or 30 of these speakers around the space. If we want to have that level of performance that is close to what we would have with a true sound system, then we're going to be looking more at this type of area. And again, that's why we consider it. If we have a situation where it's not that big of a space and we don't foresee growing, then we can combine the mixer and the amplifier together. 
But if we're part of a growing entity, or we have more than one facility, and we want to tie those together, then we may look at something like this and separate amplifiers. Again, in a traditional PA, we are pushing sound from the amplifier to the loudspeaker. and a constant voltage, we're pulling power from the loudspeaker out of the amplifier. So it's a push-pull situation, pushing in traditional, pulling in 70 volt constant voltage. Getting back to our idea of these connectors, the Phoenix connectors, if we have any of these in a situation where they are going to be inserted, we want to make sure that as these are brought into space and are inserted here, that wherever this ends up being in our, in our installation, that this is not pulled forward because these do latch, but they do not lock like an XLR. So it's very easy for these to become disconnected. On the front panel, this is actually pretty simple in the sense that you have four volume controls for the four inputs. You have a master, a bass, and a treble that are recessed, and usually we use our little tweaker here to do this. This is so the bus boy doesn't turn the bass all the way up and blow up the amplifier. On the back, we obviously have our power connection, but we also have these RCAs, and again, it says mono sum because 70 volts is always mono. This would bring in, say, a, a media player of some type and bring that into here if we were using RCAs, but we can also do it on the Phoenix connector. We can use a microphone input here. We have a high pass uh, filter. We have a phantom uh, filter on this. And one unique thing on this particular one is we have just a standard RJ45 connection point because a number of times we're going to need the volume adjusted, right? You've probably seen these somewhere in your life. And all this is, guess what's on the back? It's another transformer. And this is a volume control, zero to 10 volume control, that allows us to have input from the amplifier to come in here, just on our standard Phoenix, and it says right here, amplifier plus and minus. So again, we're simply taking this very simple two pole, plugging these in, screwing this down. So we have this plugged in, and then we have one that goes to the loudspeaker. So we're simply inserting the volume control between the amplifier and the loudspeaker and adjusting the volume. And we do that through these standard Phoenix and this Atlas system. Now this is an AT35, meaning that it can handle 35 watts. So as long as we're not sending more than 35 watts to this, we're fine. There's a 70 watt, there's a 100 watt version, just depends on how much power we're pushing. In the case of this particular JBL system here, what they have done is sort of simplified that a little bit. And this is sort of the new version of the volume control if you will, and it utilizes an RJ45. So the RJ45 simply connects here. There's a port on the back here where the RJ45 goes in, and now this goes in a single gang wall plate, and essentially does the same thing that does, just in a little more uh, advanced model. We can have a volume control control these two loudspeakers, and we would simply come from the amplifier to the volume control out to the first one, daisy chain to the second one. Now when we adjust this, those two go up and down in unison. We can also utilize different speakers. So if we had, say, a restroom and it didn't matter how much quality was in that restroom, but we did want some sound, we can have these out in the main space, which are very nice sounding, and this one, which is lower cost, in the restroom. We can mix and match without having to think about impedance and all the other issues we ran into in a standard PA. Now in the case of the electric voice system here, because this has such a large back can area, our base is extended. Now all 70 volt systems do have um, a reduced base response. That is simply, they don't have the ability to give you the full response range that you would have in a standard PA. There is some insertion loss with the transformer. Now 90% of the time it's not an issue, just something to be aware of. So in closing, let's look at this as a package. You have a situation, you have a restaurant, you have a school auditorium area, you have a lobby, you have a cry room at a church. All of these are situations where this loudspeaker may be very far from the amplifier mixer system, or we need to cover a large space in uniform, or we may have a situation where we just need to have sound and it's way out there, outdoors. All of those are perfect applications for content voltage. 
constant voltage raises that voltage, allows us to have very low loss over space and time areas, allows us to be able to dial in the different amounts of sound we're going to need for the application, and does so economically. The components are the mixer amplifier, such as we have here, combining a standard multi-zone, several inputs, several outputs, in a box along with the 70 volt amplifier. That then may go through some type of volume control, either the, the traditional one like this, or the RJ45 connection point like this, and then goes out to any type of speaker. It can be a in-ceiling speaker with no back can, in-ceiling speaker with back can, surface mount speakers, or pendant style speakers that hang down and look like a light. When we do all of that together, we have a situation where we can solve any number of audio problems in these dispersed environments. So for more information on any of these components and how to put these together, be sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer.